Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In this video, let's understand what is meant by Model Context Protocol, also known as MCP. MCP is creating a lot of hype in the generative AI world and rightfully so because of the advantages that we get by using or implementing a MCP in our generative AI applications. So in this video, let's try to understand this from a very simple perspective so that later we can use this in our different application and try to implement MCP servers and client in the apps that we are building. So that will be the agenda for today's video and let's get started. So this uh, model context protocol MCP was first launched by Anthropic and before going into the MCP part first we can just try to understand like how we use a LLM, how we kind of use the different context and what is meant with the context and all that. So once we understand this the concept of MCP or the model context protocol would make more sense. So we know that in generative AI world like everything started when kind of like open AI launched chat GPT which has their uh, large language model GPT models integrated to it and we know like what happened from them on right so we have deep sea carbon recently coming and it kind of created a lot of waves and all that and we also have open source uh, model developed by meta AI and so on so we have like all these different large language models right and basically our large language model would work is as the name suggests it is a language model or uh, it's basically a text model that's going to understand text and it's going to give you text as output, right? So let's say that we have a LLM, we have a pre-trained LLM like a GPT-4, GPT-4.5 or a DeepSeq LLM. How this works is we give a prompt which is basically some text asking the LLM for something and now it's going to give you the answer. And how this answer is based on the training data that it has been trained on. So all these large language models are trained with a very large amount of data and now when a user asks a question, now it knows how to answer this question, right? So this is basically how LLM works. Just think about opening uh, your chat GPT and asking like, explain me about machine learning or explain me about deep learning. So this LLM has been trained on so much of data and so much several domains and now it answers the question about that, right? But there are some limitations that comes with this training data. Right. So let's say that we have a pre-trained LLM that has been trained on our training data and the limitations are knowledge is outdated after training cutoff. So usually when the LLMs are released, so they are launched in different versions, right? So let's say that first we had 3, 3.5, 4 and all these versions of OpenAI models and Llama kind of release Llama 2, 3, 3 point stuff and, and 4 and so on, right? So there is a knowledge cutoff date like let's say today is like let's say april right and uh, if if a model is launching today they probably would have trained on the data until let's say december of 2024 so let's say it's april 2025 and there is a knowledge cutoff date or something like let's say december 2024 so there is like some uh, cutoff date so the model doesn't know what happened in these four months because that's not present in the training data so this is one of the limitation so because of this when a user asks something that happened recently the model would only use the previous information that it had so this is one of the limitation of this training data and the other thing is it cannot access private or dynamic data as it doesn't have access to this so private data in the sense Let's say that we are building a RAG application, Retrieval Augmented Generation application, where uh, we want the LLM to answer a particular question based on a specific document. Now, the LLM is not trained with this particular data. This private data is not present in the training data because, again, because of the data being private, right? So let's say that a company has some policy documents, but this is not like kind of public anywhere. So it's present only with the people that kind of work in that company. So if you want to answer this, the LLM doesn't have access to this. So this training data doesn't have access to the private and dynamically changing data. So this is like another limitation. And again, depending upon the data that's present in it, so it, the model can have biases in this response and also mainly because of the gaps in this knowledge. So now the model doesn't have a way to validate if this response is right or not with the actual facts. So it doesn't have a fact checking system there. And also it lacks the flexibility for real time changes. Like if something changes, it doesn't have access to update this. So think about this, right? So let's say that we are working with Pandas library and four months before we add a different Pandas version and we ask it to write a code, it writes a code. It may have worked four months before, but now let's say the version has changed, but the model, the LLM doesn't have access to this. It doesn't know like what happened recently. So this is like another limitation and, and it doesn't know about recent events, of course, because we again add this training cut of it. So these are some of the limitations. In order to kind of handle this, we give the context to the LLM. So when we say context, like think about this private data, right? So instead of ask, just asking a question to the LLM, we let's say provide the content from this document. Let's say there is like an under page document. We have, let's say a system called as RAG and we provide this information to this data as context. And now we ask a question. 
okay so let's say it's, it's about company's policies on, on on a particular thing on our data is used within that company so now we send this context to the LLM and now it would be able to answer its question and now let's say we give uh, the context on also like what happened recently in last week and we then try to ask it a question so this is the importance of context that's going to address all these limitations of training data okay so just answering the just asking a question we are also providing a context to answer from that and also the other key thing for us to use is tools right so how the model can connect to uh, the internet so that it can understand like what happened recently and how it can like update the outdated information that we have so all these are going to be kind of like done using tools so we can create an internet search tool that lets the llm to search for real time events and, and again if uh, we want the llm to fact check itself again we can connect it to a system that can when, when llm creates or generates a response we can use that tool to fact check that so the llm will have access to all these tools and all these tools can be we can build like separate tools to address like all these events so this is the importance of context and the tools when it comes to the large large language models and the generative way so i hope that for now you understand what a large language model is and what is a context is and, and what is a tool is so now let's try to understand uh, about how these tools can be used and where does this mcp kind of fit in in all these things and, and why it is kind of provides or basically it makes the life of a generative AI engineer easier and how it makes everything standard. So let's try to understand this. Let's say there is an LLM. It, it can be any LLM. It can be the Llama open source LLMs or it can be the uh, model hosted on Crop, Olama or your open AI APIs as well. So it can be any LLMs. And let's say that the user is asking a query and let's say we provide the LLM with different tools. Let's say DuckDuckGo is again a search engine. DuckDuckGo also provides a tool for the LLM to search internet if, if it wants to like search something in real time. So let's say that's one tool that we are building over here or also the DuckDuckGo itself can give their tool that the LLM can access. And let's say we have Google Drive where several documents are present and we want our LLM to uh, go through the text files and the documents that's present in the Google Drive and answer this, right? So instead of just looking at the training data, we want this uh, model to look at this external data that we have, okay? Let's say we have tool that let's say we, we can custom build these tools or we can use the tools that's provided by Google or Google Drive, we can do that. And let's say we have a database to which we have connect to again to extract some data present in the database and then use it for a response. And let's say we have also recently worked on a weather forecast tool where we have used a open weather map API in order to get like the real time weather forecast details. So let's say that these are some of the tools that we have. So when a user kind of asks a question, it can choose any of these tools to answer that user's question. Now, the important part is, let's say we want to build a system, uh, a generative AI application that's cap capable of search using this DuckDuckGo. Now, think about this. You are working on application, so you are writing a custom API code uh, to connect to this internet using this DuckDuckGo tool. So either you create custom functions, but you mainly like you can use the APIs from DuckDuckGo or their like third-party tools that they are providing you, right? Now, what if you have to like build several of these applications and every time you rewrite this code or reuse this code and so on. And the other thing is there can be several developers who are kind of doing the same thing and they write their own code to connect to these tools, right? So there is no standard way of doing this. And suddenly what happens if DuckDuckGo makes a change on their side, now you have to make changes in all those uh, applications that you have built and all these developers have to kind of work on this change, right? So now let's say there are under developers who are building this and each one of them have built it separately for let's say multiple applications that they are working on. So this is an issue, this is kind of an issue that needs to be addressed. And similarly, we have Google Drive access, database access, weather forecast tool access. This can be anything, this can be the access to the tools or it can be access to the knowledge base uh, which we need to give to the LLM, like the knowledge base in the sense, like let's say the documents or the data from which we want to answer this. So there is no standard way of communication. So that's what MCP is going to address. So now let's say we have the same tools. We have DuckDuckGo, Google Drive, Database, Weather Forecast Tool. Again, this can be custom tools that you have built, functions that you have written, or it can be like the third party tools that you have used. So now we are going to add this piece of information. Let's uh, maybe highlight this. So let's say that we are going to use this model context protocol that's going to say the same. Right, so the code of this or how you connect with this tool is going to be same in all these four places. So this MCP is basically the same thing in all of these four places. But previously, when you see it, right, 
for each of this tool we have to build everything like separately right so in this case in this four parts you would have created an api of functions that uses these tools but now everything is kind of like the same thing and the other interesting thing is it's it's every one who is integrating this tool would have the same mcp it's like the same protocol that you have to use so suddenly now let's say again we have 100 developers each of these developers are uh, building five applications with this director go google drive and all these tools now all these connections remain the same thing so that's the important aspect of this mcp and the other interesting function or the capability is when the third party service like DuckDuckGo suddenly they want to change something we don't have to change anything from our side right so that's the other critical aspect so we don't have to worry about the changes that they make so they make the changes and, and they kind of adhere to the mcp pro mcp like all these protocols and, and the way how to build this and now suddenly we don't have to make any changes and it makes this integration part like more smoother this is why people kind of compare this to uh, you know the usb c that we have USB C cables and the port that we have. Think about this, right? So let's say that you have a laptop and you want to connect this laptop to a hard disk drive, or let's say you want to connect this to a SSD drive or Android phone or an iPhone. So previously we know that iPhone had lightning cable, so you need a different uh, wire for that, different port to connect it to the laptop, right? So again, it can be the USB, but you need a lightning cable to connect it. And now let's say your Android has a C type and let's say your, your uh, SSD is having a different port, it doesn't have C or Lightning, it, let's say it has a different port and similarly all these inconsistencies are there, right? So now we can connect to let's say a hard disk drive or let's say a SSD, iPhone or a, or a Android phone with a simple, the same USB-C connector things are going to be much simpler, right? So this is just similar to it. So the tools and knowledge base can be anything, but all these can be connected with a standard way of communication. So model context protocol is again, it's, it's nothing complex. It's just a standard way of our LLM can communicate with the tools and the knowledge base that we are going to give it access to. So that's about this MCP. So again, it, it's, it's not complex at all. It, it's uh, how we are going to make this communication process more standard. So now let's try to understand this with all the components that we have in MCP. So you would have heard about the MCP servers, MCP clients, host and so on. So let's try to understand all of these terms so that once we understand this, we can build systems late in later videos as well that, that kind of like implements this kind of architecture and, and makes use of this MCP servers and clients. Right. So let's say that we have a MCP host. MP, MCP host can be like anything, the application that we are building. Let's say that we are building a agent or a system that has uh, this ability to search for whether to search the internet and and to like you know answer users questions and so on so we, the mcp host can be your machine or it can be the agent that we are building and then we would have mcp clients so these mcp clients are going to connect and, and communicate with the mcp servers right so now let, let's come back from this part so let's say that the data source that we have is the mysql database and now let's say that we want to give the data that's present in this MCP to the LLM or think about connecting this data source to the LLM that we are working on. So, and then this is file system is like, let's say your local file system, local files that you want to have access to. And this is like the internet access that's present over here. So in previous case, before MCP, what you would have done is you, you have written like separate APIs and all those things to access all these things. Now you just need like a simple MCP kind of protocol, the model context protocol that can connect to all these things. So what would happen is, we have MCP, right? And they should create their MCP server. And this MCP server connects to like the tools and, and so on, like everything uh, we need to kind of use that service. Similarly, if we are hosting something on the file system, we would, for this custom file system that we have, we would create MCP server for our local machine. So, and then again, to access the internet, we can also like, like have like other MCP servers that is like already built now. To connect to each of these things, so we are, we are connecting to MySQL, file systems and internet. For all these things, you are going to use the common model context protocol. So everything remains the same in this aspect. So there is a MCP client, client that's going to talk the same language and connect to, to all the MCP servers that you have. So you see, we have the same MCP servers throughout and later this MCP servers can connect to the respective you know tools, knowledge base that it has. So this is the entire idea. It's basically like how we can connect to all these servers by just like in a common language rather than building this individually. Now we have just mentioned three things. What if you need like 
under tools and under knowledge bases. So we don't have to build separate communications for each of these things. Rather, if they have this MCP server built within them, so it can be the third party services. It can be like the DuckDuckGo search that they have. So they would provide this MCP server and it can be like, let's say the Google Drive. So they can provide, let's say the MCP server. All we have to do is connect to this service with the same thing. Again, connection of the MCP server to the client is not going to change. So you can just like plug in play this single component, the same component again and again. If you have three clients, you're going to this, you use the same MCP client and connect it three times. Again, it's not like we are going to connect all these three with the same single MCP. It's like you have the same MCP repeated three times and you're going to connect to this MCP service. So this is how it's going to work. And when you, are, you have like 100 tools that you have to use or like thousands of uh, knowledge bases that you have, all you need to do is just have a common protocol to connect to the servers and this makes life much easier and when the third party tools or services are making the changes again as they adhere to all these uh, rules and, and things and so on they would update the servers update the prompts and so on and, and we don't again have to make much changes from our side so what is uh, the MP, mcp servers are going to provide uh, to you know to the LM basically are the context it needs to understand this tool or basically to use this tool it's going to give access to the tools itself and and and, and the prompts that we need so it's like previously we would have written the prompts to tell the llm that this is a weather tool so you when a user asks a question on weather forecast you have to use this specific tool and later we would have you also used a internet search tool where we would have write, write where would have you know written a system prompt to say that this is an internet tool when when a user asks you to search internet or ask for recent uh, events you can use this tool so we would write all these prompts now all these prompts to use those tools are given by these mcp servers so your mcp servers is now going to provide with the context that the model needs the tools it needs and also the prompts that it needs so this is about mcp so this is all about how you can create this clients called as mcp clients to have a common way of communication no matter what's the mcp server is no matter what's the different tool that you are connecting to so this is the entire idea of like building systems that talks the same language so that it's easier for for us to connect to it through like you know to different data sources and tools so this is all about mcp so i hope that this is simple enough for you to understand uh, please let me know if you have any doubts or, or any other stuff like and and again in the later videos let's see how we can build some mcp servers uh, like you know let's say to our file systems or, or we can use the mcp servers that's, that's present already or not so that's something that we can do in the upcoming videos so uh, that is all from my side and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching